So I feel the need to go over um, setting up MongoDB and Express. Uh, more specifically, I used the Mongoose package. Mongoose JavaScript library comes with its tools and <coughs> also comes with MongoDB with it. Um, just to go over how I got set up, set up with that. And so right here is basically all it is. This is the connection here. <coughs> and uh, I'll go over that actually in this file here. <coughs> so to start off, we require, uh, require our Mongoose module, which is a JavaScript library. Um, we then start a connection. So we store the Mongoose um, module in a Mongoose constant. <coughs> and then we can access its methods from there. We then create a connection with mongoose.connect and we pass in a string. And this string is actually, <coughs> if I move over to here, the uh, MongoDB connection string URI format, this string, even on the, even on the Mongoose API docs, um, it references the Mongo connection string spec for more detail. It does not appear to be too different from it, if at all. <clears throat> and this is what we use to connect. So this um, connection string is, is uh, has a specific format. It begins with the Mongo colon uh, uh, word or keyword or phrase to indicate that this URI is um, accessing the uh, Mongo database. So it says here, a required prefix to identify that this is a string in the standard connection format. Um, so whether or not this is being used as a real URI, it is indicating kind of the path to our project, okay? Um, by default, the port, the Mongo port exists, appears to exist on the 27017 port. That appears to be where Mongo opens up at. But if otherwise specified, we can change that. Otherwise, that would be right after the localhost statement. So it would be 27017. But we can leave that by for, for now. Um, and it ended up working when I set it up this way. Uh, next would be our uh, database <coughs> that we're using in Mongo. And um, that is, well, here's the, here's the syntax here for the specifics as well as the keywords. But what we're doing is we're just doing the, the bare necessities, indicating our Mongo URI is connecting here. And then we have the uh, host domain, localhost, which can be localhost. It can be your default IP address. They say 127.0.0.1. Um, I've had cases where my computers are 168.192, etc., etc. Um, and then the database, just the, the database name you wish to use. Um, now, the Mongo documentation uh, specified giving mongo.promise the global.promise. I'm not sure where that comes from. Um, I'd have to look into that more. But the quick tutorial I referenced to get this all working did not use this at all. This is not does not appear to be necessary, depending on your um, system and setup. We then also stored the Mongo's connection itself in a separate con um, DB constant to represent the database. And then we did an error check, kind of like a connection check to make sure it existed, by binding a error event <coughs> to the database. So uh, bind connection to error event. So if we are detecting error, we then do put, we then um, call a callback function, which just logs the error message. Um, this is not necessary either. I, after following that one tutorial, just got rid of this as well to get it working. <clears throat> so this is what I was left with at this point. Um, now for creating your schema, and this is where I kind of got confused, expecting some operations to actually take place. We are we store the schema in a variable, which is kept in the mongoose package, a mongoose module. So we just store it separately so we can use this class over and over. So we then create a, instantiate a new schema or initiate a new schema. 
and we store that in our variable to use later. So we, we, what we're doing with this is we're creating a new schema object to declare our schema markup for a database collection in MongoDB. And we do that by passing in the properties that we use, that we want to use in that collection. And if by default there's only one value set, it should be the data type for that property as indicated here, it's a string. Uh, I, I'd also use a number for my IDs. And maybe I can pull that up real quick, that there is uh, uh, schemas, there are more data types and values you can pass in. Um, might find it right here really shortly. Oh, or not. But, um, it's at the top, so there are more values you can pass in. Um, for example, you can do pass in arguments to the property, and the arguments by default for the type would be type. And then <clears throat> there are other arguments that as follows. But this is what you need to get started. So. When we're inserting data, um, our collection should maintain this schema. Um, so it does not enforce entries that are already in the collection. What it does is provides a interface or middleware or middleman function that we insert data into our collection by. So we're using this schema to bind our values to these properties. And then through this uh, mongoose, mongoose method, the methods in Mongoose, we will insert data through Mongoose, but we will do so through our schema for that collection. So moving on next, we then create our model in the Mongoose. And so um, <clears throat> this is a key name. Um, I'm not sure if it has to uh, directly link to the table or the collection, I mean. Um, but we so the first argument would be the name we want to give and I think it should be actually be the name of the collection I can test that real quick just to confirm I have my notes here <clears throat> and I will pass through the insertion section insert object here right into this page and we will console log to see the results. Um, so by default, when I refresh this page, it is logging those entries. So what I'll do is just add a row in there. Um, so that it would be under the notes router. And we're gonna just paste that in there. So what we're doing is uh, creating our data collection. It's an object with the properties you wanna insert. We're gonna then create a new instance of our notes model, which uh, I'll go back over. So we have that up above. What I'm going to do is um, yeah, this ended up working, I think. Um, what I'm going to do is delete this. No, I'm going to keep that. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is rename this to app and find out how that would work. Um, so we take our data, we create a new instance. I don't know how else it would target that collection. So we're gonna do save, create a new instance, and instance.save will then console.log everything in that collection. Um, so this is uh, what we'll, we'll be doing. So let's now reload our thing and refresh the page. Okay, um, it returns nothing. So let's manually go in there and see, uh, go to Mongo and see what's in there. We'll use express and get db notes uh, find everything. Um, so they are already in there. What could be happening is we're getting an error. Um, Oh, I see, so we're not targeting the right database. So what we can do to do that real quick is create a new um, a new collection. So we will do db.createCollection, and we'll create, what did we do? 
we we, what would we name the model to? App. We'll create app. Um, we'll do it lowercase. Um, oops. <clears throat> okay, so we have our collection now. And we'll make this lowercase as well. Um, I think Mongoose will try to select a plural version by default. But we'll just leave it like that for now. It should work fine. And we'll restart our server. Load the page. And you can see that we are now adding our values in um, some text. So our conclusion is that um, when we're creating our model, OK, back to here. So we have our schema that we do that we do insertions by. We do this to create our model, okay? So we create our schema, we store the schema class, we create a new schema class defining uh, the collection markup we want to do. And then we create or we kind of link this mongoose model and we're going to through this mongoose model. Now this is not interacting at all with the MongoDB database yet. Okay, so we are going to create a model inside the mongoose um, class, right? And the name is going to be notes. Um, I don't know if the case matters at all, but mongoose documentation does state that by default it will search for a plural version of this. So what it'll do is probably just try to add an S if the last character is not an S. I don't know if the case matters. And what we're doing for the second parameter of the model method is just binding or, or throwing in our object structure that we expect. Okay? So what you could say is, um, now I haven't tested this, but let's try and do the same thing. So what we're going to do for our data is pass in a property that is not defined in our schema, expected schema. So let's see what it tries to do then. But I suspect that because we're, as I said, we're doing everything by this schema and by extension, or by, through the model, and by extension the schema, it will only add the properties that match um, the schema. So it kind of binds the, the, the model schema with the um, object collection that we pass into it in the instance. Um, so let's try that. So the schema is still set to apps, the app collection, and we're going to throw in a top of my head a poverty word, okay? And we'll do, how about true? We'll just do true. And so what we should expect to see, we should expect to see it not added at all, but we will see an extra property added if it's working. Now, the find is still going along with this. It's targeting the app collection. It's finding all the object collections. It's not really filtering them. So if we go to Mongo now, and we can just ensure that we use Express and see all the collections in the app. So we can show collections, and we will do a DB. Um, there's a plural version as well. So see, we, we threw in app, um, but I suspect See, so by default, as I said, mo the mongoose model method will by default prefer a plural version of collections. Because a collection should be a collection of data, so there should be plural versions of it. And this lends to a better um, <clears throat> verbose syntax when you do loops. And the same is true with MySQL and other, other such things. Uh, so I have a transaction app, and my table is actually transactions. Uh, categories, subcategories are also plurals, accounts are accounts, because then when if you were to set up a JavaScript loop, you could do the loop, and you would do a for each or for of loops in JavaScript that would present itself as, <clears throat> if we're doing notes, it would be a note of notes, and in PHP that would be for each, I think, um, notes as note of the like. Of course, that would be the uh, variable prefix would be that in PHP. But it lends itself well to that when you properly name stuff in such a way. So Mongoose actually went ahead and made a plural version of the database, of the, of the collection, I'm sorry. And so even when we check here, we still don't see those values. Um, you can see they're being added here. 
but they none of them contain that extra property and they would not be hidden here if they were indeed being added so let's um, oops close that and go back to this note file um, so this is indeed the collection of the database we're going to be creating a model for. This is our um, kind of like just a table structure or schema. Uh, schema can be misleading, so um, say how you want, but it'll just be your st intended structure for that collection. And now here is the markup for inserting an object. It's rather simple. Again, following the documentation, it was less clear. They did not divvy it up as well. Um, indicating what actually inserted anything or how to go about doing that. But I will just briefly cover that as well. From what I saw in this tutorial, I watched just to correct all the problems I encountered trying to set this up myself. And I'll show you how to how to do that. And uh, this is a very simple file. So I've only used Express a few times, so nothing I show you is gonna be too advanced. It's all gonna be starting from scratch and a really early stage in just a sample project. So it should relate to a lot of what you're doing as long as you're relying intently on the mongoose for your MongoDB interactions because MongoDB comes with it. I've also removed MongoDB require from here and the dependencies. So uh, for the insert method, um, again, this should follow a connection, okay? So up on my main index.js page, I have my connection up here. See, I got rid of, well, I didn't get rid of this. So I have my, my necessities, a requiring the mongoose package and creating a connection. That is stored in mongoose. This isn't just, this is um, storing the connection in mongoose so you can reuse that later on. Again, when I added, when we stored the connection separately before, uh, I'm going to revert everything back. Uh, when we stored this separately, it was a bit confusing for me why we were doing this or why we had to store it separately. Um, doesn't really say. I assume they wanted to avoid conflicts with this error with the main mongoose class, which would make sense if only they had explained that a bit more um, or, or provided a sufficient guide to getting set up with that. I could be wrong. Maybe they did. But I tried to approach it um, just going by the documentation. So the insert methods here should follow a previous connection being set up. And it might not have to happen in the same file because I am including a model here and the model does require mongoose it does do the schema as well um, if you're just trying to get this to work and get set up initially and you're still new to this I would not bank on the the chance that this file being in, imported into this one at a later point would inherit the variables up above just because of the way node.js seems to behave it, it doesn't necessarily just include files like PHP would it doesn't just add the block of text in this section where you include it wherever that would be um, like right here it just does include there it kind of um, as I've said in previous video it creates some subscription services between the files and it kind of just uh, kind of like um, compiles everything into its own um, internal compiler um, I'm making up words there but that's just my way of understanding it so don't think of it so literally. Now, having this follow, you can store your data separately like this, or you can just insert it right in there. Um, I found doing stuff like, stuff like that actually makes it more difficult, even though it is more concise. Just for brevity, as a beginner getting started, just do this to get it working. So you can avoid um, having to untangle everything later on if it doesn't work, which is exactly why we do this kind of stuff. So we store our data, and the data we want to pass through is just a collection. And you could populate this with a form, but this is what it should be look like. It should look like going in. Um, so if you were to do that, you would take the form values set, and then bind them into this object or build this object from this. So if you had like a maybe a query that you stored the queries from the URI, you would do like a query ID value, and you do it here. But um, this is what you should pass in to the instance. So what we do next is we create an instance or what we do is we instantiate the model that we created. Okay. So what we're doing up here is we have our uh, schema created and we're creating a mongoose model 
which represents the collection in our actual MongoDB database. And we're using uh, the schema just to show what we expect to go in there. And so we're storing our model in the variable here, actually. So um, we can use this here. So I have done some console logs on the mongoose class by default, just because I was running into issues. And I've seen my model stored in there. But I wouldn't try to access it from there um, through properties and dot notation just to reach into the mongoose class. I would. It looks like it returns uh, your. It creates a model class and it returns it when you do so. So I would try to store that here for now. Again, just to get this working. So what we do then is instantiate that by creating a new instance of that class, and we pass in our data into the constructor. Okay. And then we run a method on it. And this is method is what actually performs the operation on the MongoDB database. So don't, th don't think of anything happening until here. This is where the actual connection that we established up here begins um, performing operations, the, the CRUD operations. Okay? And this is what actually will update. Well, this is for this specifically, will save the data to the database. So if it's it, in the context of accessing the database, it's saving a new collection of data. Just like if you would open up a new file, it might do a save as, right? And you'd give it some name. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to cover updates. I'm just going to cover this for now. But I might do that later on. Now to, and this is what I was using over here so you could see how that works. Um, so I have my connection up here again. I am requiring my notes model this is, this is in my model folder, so I could create more of these to represent collections. Okay, and I'm going to fix that actually now too. Um, I have it uppercase. I wonder if I probably just shouldn't. Um, this is a habit from Meteor where they prefer their templates and classes and, and whatnot, their interfaces to be uppercase. Maybe I should just make it lowercase. Again, the tutorials and the Mongoose API has it uppercase for some reason. And yet, you can see the, the naming, sys naming um, practice for Mongoose in their documentation seems to be lowercase. Uh, especially in Express in general, they prefer lowercase naming practices. <clears throat> um, so, I am requiring the model here, and I'm storing it in my notes um, constant there. And I'm doing that because that's how I did it in Meteor, and it's more comfortable. It literally because I'm translating the Meteor version of this app into an Express version, just to gain familiarity. Familiarity, pull that off <laughs> with both frameworks, which run on Node, on top of Node and Mongo, etc. Um, you can ignore this, and we're going to go down to my notes router, where I'm actually going to be retrieving. We're going to go over me retrieving um, the, the collection data now. So, how you do that operation? We'll actually check it out here first. Um, so now ignore the insert. These do not go side by side. So you either have um, this, you either have this, or you have the insert. Okay, but they should both follow a connection. So kind of see these as interchangeable. And to emphasize that, we'll just have an or comment there. So either this or this. And you know what, just emphasize that more, we'll have uh, parentheses. Oops. And we'll have some parentheses down here. There, so either or these two. Now to get your collection data, um, it's very similar to the actual MongoDB database as contrary to a save method, which has no relation, I believe, to the MongoDB methods for your collection. It would be an insert method. Um, we, all, we do use a find method, and we call the find method on our model that we created. The model, not the model instance, by the way. Okay. So um, we don't create an instance of the model. We just um, we're just um, doing the model that we pass wherever we do that. So we use the find method, 
and this is where you can pass in your arguments to compare um, the what the matches you want to make just to retrieve very specific kind of rows or uh, objects or documents if you prefer documents I've seen that used a lot I prefer rows and objects because that's what they are but you can say documents and this is I saw from the tutorial so these are two separate ways of doing it so I just followed the tutorial to get it working so we're doing no matches passing in no object we then do a then method which will execute this callback afterwards on the results that we that it gets so we pass in a function callback and doc is the property is going to inherit from the collections that you that you're requesting or that you're querying and then we just do a console.log and that's what you saw in the console down here um, over in the actual file we did both we did a console.log doc and we also performed the result render from the um, express app route method and get method we rendered the notes file and passed in the doc collection as notes and then in the notes file we just used it as a as a regular collection to access the properties the for each for each one so we do a for each and then we get the ID and the text as we see here um, Um, so for this syntax here, actually these are both separate. So for this syntax, we are comparing or doing a match. So for every object in the collection that has a text property that whose value is equal to this string, we will return if it matches. And then this is the callback function. Um, so we're going to expect an error if it, there was an error and the documents as above. This is a briefer version of this. So we're just, the tutorial passed, only expected the doc. So, and then what we do is we just console.log. The third way of doing this is the same syntax as above, except a second parameter between the callback and the uh, match arguments here will be the, um, the property or field the property of the objects from the collection that you want to actually return. So otherwise, if you don't indicate that, it'll return the entire object, all, uh, all the properties, and you're only going to be matching for this. But what we're doing here is we're matching for that, but we only want the text property back. And let me just um, consult the Mongoose um, documentation for that real quick because there is a non-standard way of selecting multiple properties. I believe there's just a space between them. So if I wanted to, I just have a space between text and ID, and that's not conjoining the two. Those are the two fields I want. I just include them in one string. Um, so let me just consult that real quick. Uh, go to queries, I believe. And yeah, so we, we can see up here this is the example. Again, it's hard to read. This is not good font or sizing, and the color's awful. That's just my nitpicking. So they're expecting the name prop property and the occupation property. And I don't know why they give this example again, because they're passing in this weird selector here. That's pretty confusing, but I guess they're trying to show what you can do. And then they do this. Um, uh, fill in here with the console.log to bind all of this. It's just not very clear. So in a single string you just pass in all the uh, properties that you want and what the find method I suppose will do is it'll just split the string into an array by spaces. And I suppose it uses this as an execute to turn that into a uh, into compiler code instead of an identifier or a string, if I'm saying that properly. Here's another example of using the select method on the query, um, or the, just the select method uh, to 
this is your, your arguments you want to match for, this is the fields or properties you want to select of, and here you can execute it, which this will actually perform the query and the callback, what to do after it's, it's um, successfully completed. And that's, uh, that's all I have covered. That's all I have as well to this point. I'm just going to rewind um, so it gets to a working point. Uh, no insert. Um, there should be no insert text hello again. It might be going back too far. This is the first. Yeah, no. So we're going to get rid of that. Gonna get rid of poverty, and we're gonna get rid of the whole thing. Okay, that's where we should be at. Um, yep. So, I'm gonna pass an empty object, and that's what we want. Okay. I'm gonna rewind this all the way except for here, and I'm gonna rewind this a little bit. Um, just to fix this. Okay. Uh, see, at one point I thought this was actually creating the collection, but no, it's not doing anything until it's not having any interaction with the database. It's just storing this temporarily in Mongo. We're exporting it as well. Okay, ID is a number, text is a string. I'm just going to run the test to make sure this is all fixed. Fixed up. I should now be expecting my original notes. Note one, two, three. And we will do that. DB notes find. Uh, show collections. Show DBs. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to connect. Express db find. Okay, good. That's all set. Show collections, and we want to db remove collection. Let's see if this works. We want to remove app. Um, I might just do app remove. and apps.remove and if we show collections they're still there um, help we'll do db help uh, if we do the um, so we have a create a collection method up here can we also drop database um, I just want to clean this up. db.mycol.help. Let's see what we have here. There's an insert method. Can we remove? Nope, that'll remove it from there. Um, you know, it might not matter because that's just the nature of MongoDB. Okay, um, okay, I think I caught up, and that's everything you need to know for. Getting Mongoose to work in Express.